Um, I'm Darla Reiki, and I'm a pediatrician at Mankato Clinic. I have been a pediatrician for, <laughs> I should have figured this out beforehand, uh, started in 1997. So it's been a long time um, and practiced in Wisconsin, Minnesota, and South Dakota. Okay. So you've obviously seen a lot in that time, I'm sure. I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, um, you know, as a pediatrician, I guess, how do you see your role, I guess, maybe contributing similar to or aligned with that of health educators, physical educators, um, and so forth? Yes. Um, you know, being a pediatrician, uh, it's great because we have well child visits. So uh, we have a captive audience uh, yeah. for several visits as kids grow up. Uh, of the child and then of course a family member you know usually a mom or dad is uh, obviously with the child so um, I, I think education is a huge part of my job of uh, whether it's uh, health uh, and activity kind of things or nutrition or development all those things of how do we take care of our kids so um, unfortunately, I just have a 20 minute window, um, whereas, you know, again, educators, they have a different platform of they they build relationship with these kids uh, for the entire school year. Um, but again, I have the luxury of having a parent being a captive part of the captive audience as well. Sure, sure. And I and I guess, too, um, do you see kind of possibilities for potential partnerships between you and potential teachers. And I ask only because I was a former teacher and I guess I never really thought to maybe connect with and reach out to pediatricians and so forth. But do you see, maybe you have had partnerships or potentially see opportunities for that there that maybe you could speak to, maybe not? Yeah, I, I think it's huge. I, I don't think we have a formal partnership and that is unfortunate because I do think we have a common goal. Um, and I always, I am always amazed that I think our words are powerful. Uh, sometimes we feel defeated or discouraged that oh, I, I say the same thing over and over and do they hear me? But you know, studies have shown uh, they do. They do hear what you say and sometimes that can make a, a life change. Um, and I think the same thing I saw with my kids, you know, they would come home from school, a health class, and they would have this goal or did you know this kind of thing? And I'm thinking, of course I did. And of course we've talked about it and we try to live this out. But again, teachers are have a powerful um, influence on our kids. So it was very eye-opening in, uh, again, with my own children coming home. So I think our message has to be similar. Um, yeah. And I think it is similar, but yeah, I think a formal partnership is, uh, is a great goal. Um, I practiced in Wisconsin and I was part of a move to improve program. It was a school-based program, um, but it really brought in the clinic uh, professionals. We had a dietitian that did weekly um, meetings with families, uh, a personal trainer that was assigned to each family through the physical therapy department. Um, and again, school school personnel. So it was terrific. That was a great idea. It was a grant. Um, and, you know, not only I didn't really participate as a professional, I actually participated with my daughter. We did the program together. So I thought that was an awesome uh, collaboration between school and uh, healthcare. Okay. Yeah. And I think you know, what you just highlighted there is kind of one of the key reasons we thought about trying to do this, because I think what you just highlighted is that whole community-based impact, right? It's not just the teacher. It's not just the pe pediatrician. It's everybody trying to collectively work together, yes. which is why, you know, we're trying to get perspectives from, you know, counselors, um, nutritionists, all of these other key stakeholders. But I think in the in the end, that connection of we're not working separately, we're working collectively is a key piece that always has to be at, hopefully at the forefront right. um, of the mindset and so forth. So um, I guess, you know, thinking about recruitment and retention, at least for within, well, right now within education, it's hard to recruit and it's hard to retain teachers. And I don't know if that's the same in, in the medical field, but obviously myself as a trainer of future students, I want to recruit as many as possible, but I also want to make sure that they feel competent and confident when they go out and they actually teach in the schools. So, you know, 
in terms in terms of I guess support and creating quality teachers from mm -hmm. your perspective can you offer any suggestions um i guess from a broader medical perspective um to kind of highlight that maybe yeah um you know i guess i would say one we have to make sure that the the school is funding those special programs i think that's uh, been a huge thing that you know as as they face uh budget issues that a lot of the special things like uh, physical education gets um, maybe um, there's some concern that that could be on the chopping block. And I, I'm sure as people go out and, and look at careers, mm -hmm. that's in their mind of, is there going to be programs that I can uh, teach at? So I, I think certainly making sure that we continue to, to, um, promote that uh, or and be advocates to say this is important this is important for uh, students is uh, imp uh, is part of that um, I, I think you know we have the benefit in Mankato of having a university right here right. so we need to be make sure we have those strong relationships with the university because um, as we know in healthcare, when we have students come in and uh, observe, it's much more likely that they're going to stay in Mankato um, if they have a good experience. And, and uh, so, again, if we can uh, be partners in that of showing uh, that we've got good uh, community support for uh, physical education, for education just in general, I think that right. that is huge of of. Uh, building um, a, a high quality workforce. Sure. Yeah. Um, and you kind of highlighted that, I, that aspect of advocacy, which kind of leads into the next question. But um, thinking, thinking to it, thinking at it from like a healthcare profession standpoint, not, not necessarily just health and physical education, but, you know, what role do you see equity, diversity and inclusiveness play in recruiting future professionals, I guess, in healthcare? you know, which could be, you know, pediatrics, it could be health, could be physical education, but how do you see that role of equity, diversity, and inclusiveness, um, you know, coming into play? Yeah, um, you know, the diversity in our community is what drew us here, uh, and, and I have a very diverse family as well, and it is huge. I think that our that healthcare and education reflect that diversity as well. So if we can recruit um, the, the minorities the, into that workforce, I think is uh, very powerful because again, those are role models for our kids. And um, I think they will give us firsthand knowledge of where we need to culturally take in uh, to account some of whether it's physical education or how we approach health care, um, how, you know, from very simple things of uh, how do you approach a physical exam in my case of yeah. uh, and being culturally sensitive. So um, I, I think we need to, again, our workforce does right now does not reflect the diversity we have in our um, community. Right, and I, say, yeah, and I would agree in terms of education as well. Um, you know, when we I think of diverse students, we want to have diverse teachers so th those di those students who maybe coming from a different ethnic background can maybe have a teacher that they can look at that looks like them and so forth. And, 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 and I don't think there's enough of that clearly. Um, yes. so, you know, I think that's a really good response and, you know, kind of thinking about it in terms of like physical education, health education and curriculum and kind of what it is we teach. Mm -hmm. Is there any, I guess, areas that, you know, from your profession and so forth, you see that may need to change? Yeah, uh, what not getting an, or what students, I guess, may not be getting enough of. I, you know, I think one of the, the things that came to light a couple of years ago, we had the drowning um, of a uh, Somali boy. And um, I, I think that did bring together some of, of the different groups to say, what do we need to do to uh, teach water safety, to teach uh, swimming lessons? Um, to that community. So um, 
I think that's just one example of uh, that of, of something that just comes to my mind right away of that's something that needs to be done. Um, I think, you know, even just teaching, I, I think when we had, when you had uh, shared some questions with me, you talked about geographically as well. Um, and I think, you know, we live in Minnesota where it's winter most of the time. So um, really, I, again, focusing on what, what do people, what can people do to be active in the winter? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, again, in uh, Wisconsin, they had snowshoeing and they would teach uh, cross country skiing. And I mean, I think those are important things of, of seeing where you live and um, building on those things of, yeah, let's give these uh, kids lifetime skills of, yeah. that they can, can use. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, you talk about getting students to be um, competent and confident in their ability to feel feel safe in the water. Obviously, the land of 10,000 lakes, that's critically important. But again, it goes back to the resources we have available to us. So that's, I think, where that community piece could come into play really well. Like if elementary students were able to connect with local, you know, YMCAs or local community swimming pools to set up potential instruction and so forth it'd be a, it'd be I think it'd be a two-way benefit absolutely I think we also have to take barriers away of you know we, it is offered in the high school mm -hmm. um, and how many notes do uh, kids request of can I get out of that right <laughs> it's such an important thing and and uh, we're doing a disservice if we're just signing notes to say, yeah, you don't need to participate. But again, being culturally sensitive to why, yep. the mm -hmm. whys, and then uh, trying to address those so that we uh, get people doing the things that um, are important. Absolutely. Um, I guess what advice, if any, would you give to maybe establishing those partnerships with professionals, maybe in my field of higher education or just professional education, you know, connecting with teachers, but also in your the medical field and so forth. Yeah, you know, everybody hates meetings and committees and all <laughs> yep. those things, but yep. I, I think that's probably what it takes. You get it. You have to have a, an individual that uh, sees the value and then really seizes that opportunity and and. Uh, reaches out. I think that we're all probably willing participants. You just need probably the right leader to to gather gather those uh, different entities because yep. I, I think it's it is important um, to and do finding that time that works with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, again, that's where our, our the strength comes. Um, and you can do amazing things when everybody partners together. Again, we can all have the same message, but if we can partner together, uh, again, that, that can be a huge uh, benefit to the community. Absolutely. Um, any, I guess, you know, final thoughts from kind of your perspectives, I guess, as a pediatrician in terms of education, or just things you see as being critically important that you weren't able to maybe highlight um, in our brief discussion? I, you know, one of my um, uh, soapboxes maybe is uh, the screen, screen time. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I, I if that's certainly part of the thing that I spend time on uh, with kids and families. We have just gotten away from moving mm -hmm. and playing, you know, just seeing play as uh, physical activity. And so I think that's huge that we really address the screen issue and again, um, just maybe set reasonable goals. I always tell kids, you know, sometimes it's daunting if you say you should do yeah. uh, 30 or 60 minutes a day for five days a week of, of exercise, you know, and, and not using those words, but really trying to find the small goals that people really are attainable and uh, work on those. So, I, you know, it's always part of my message. Uh, and I think being uh that's part of healthy living so yeah uh, that would be one of those things that i would really like to see um make sure that message gets out there 
Right. And I think too, like a conversation I have with my students is, you know, if, if a first, second or third grader isn't physically active, oftentimes it's not a result of them not wanting to. It just might be as a result of the, you know, the, the situation they're in. So I think, again, taking that community approach and maybe trying to get the parents more involved in being physically active, if it's possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think if 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 it's promoted from that top drawn approach, then hopefully it'll you know sink in a little more. But you talked about just that ability to play, and I think from an elementary standpoint, you know, the more students run around and play in the playground, the more they're able to develop their fundamental motor skills, which leads them to all kinds of different opportunities later in life because they feel more competent and they feel more confident in their ability to move their body and and so forth. So I would I would reiterate that sentiment. Yes, absolutely. And I think, again, we kids, uh, we we are so lucky to be able to, uh, that is our audience, because if we can make changes in that age group, um, I, that will carry on for the, the rest of their life. Uh, that is definitely, I, I think, proven out that uh, lifestyle changes start early. And if you can uh, be a part of that to promote uh, wellness, that's uh, huge. Huge benefit. Absolutely. And again, going back to what I highlight to my students, if if they're teaching elementary physical education, I highlight it as one of the most important jobs, in my opinion, because they're setting that foundation for students to either want to be physically active or not want to by what the teacher potentially might be doing or might not be doing. So they got a critical impact in terms of setting the stage for those kids they're working with either positively or negatively. Absolutely.